Hello there here, and today we are going to play Lightkeeper, developed by Smile Straw Bunny, who have developed uh, Little Red Memories. Mm, what else? The previous game that I just played, Don't Let It Out, and also Berry Witch, Cherry Witch, and what's that one? From the Sun to the Moon, which is not available right now on the itch.io, I think, because it's getting reworked or something. Anyway, yes, this is Lightkeeper, a spook to wear visual novel jam for 2023. Either way, yes, let's wake up, shall we? This game took like one to one hour and a half, I think, so yeah. The last thing I remember feeling was a cold cloud hand gripping a hold of my face. Seeing something move within the shadow just barely out of my peripheral vision. Let me turn off the light for the mood. My room light right now is on. It was that then my vision was shrouded in darkness. Darkness is rare in the kingdom of Lumion. However, I'm not in Lumion anymore, am I? The kingdom of light never had a heavy humid air like the atmosphere of wherever I am. The castle never felt this cold. You arose from the bed in your cell, pondering your new predicament. Ah, something that was clasped around your throat. You could feel it tugging you back the moment you tried to stand up. A chain? No way, was it? Was I taken? In prison? The metal around your neck was firm, but your eyes trailed down to the chain it was attached to. The cracks in the wall indicated that wherever you were, it was quite old. This could be to your benefit if your suspicions were correct. Oh, and what is your suspicion? Which I already assume what it is. What? Sorry, I misclicked something. As the princess, of course, you are trained exactly what to do should a situation like this happen. God damn it. <laughs> okay, okay, that's funny. Stay put and wait to be rescued, for help will always find you. Uh -huh. I can just stay put. There has to be something I can do, other than just sit here helplessly. You gather their strength, try to conjure a bit of light to get a better view of your surroundings. Nothing. Huh? huh? You felt weak drain. Ah, okay, interesting. The magic you had feels limited now. A dizzy numbing sensation coursed through your mind spreading to your fingertips. Whatever you did, it seems you would have to make do without magic for now. Focusing on it only made you more feeble. Perhaps wearing out a chain link first will be the best course of action. Do you want to break a chain? Can I save the game? Oh, what? what? <laughs> Did I just make a choice? Okay, I, 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 can't. I, I just keep a dialogue. I don't want to do that. Who knows what might happen if I do? You release your grip on the chain, saying as you turn your head observe your surroundings once more. I couldn't move much, but the room was small enough you could look at a few things nearby. I suppose I might as well look around the room while I wait to find out my feet. You gain a trait... Obedient? Is this a point and click game? Because... Oh, this is a point and click game. I see. So they are utilizing the RPG Maker mechanic by making an invincible character, I assume? Which then walks around here and when we click stuff, it interacts with it. A chandelier gently swayed overhead, emitting a dim light around the room. That is amazing. You admire the aesthetic silently, the, the mechanic. You spot a book on a windowsill, but it's just out of your reach. You can tell what it's about from the spot you're stuck in. More things that are barely out of your reach. You had never felt so restricted before. Helpless, weak. Your words only increase the longer you think about your predicament. Did I... Was that the music? That was the music. More things that... Okay. What? 
What is this? Huh. Uh, painting. Looking upwards, you see a painting of a dark figure above your bed. The fabric drip over the face, yet you still recognize the woman in the painting. After all, you've heard countless stories about her. Her scars were deep enough to show the most tainted magic hiding beneath her scaly exterior. An aura of intimidation strikes your your heart vigorously. Kin of a dragon, ripper of enlightened souls. The Light Keeper. Title drops. She's been causing problem all throughout Lumion since as long as you could remember. Let me check my model actually. Oh, yep. There we go. This 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 will be better. She must have taken me. But why? Is it for power over my kingdom or? So no double interaction. I'm just checking. Uh, Z interacts with stuff that we have been with. Finally! <laughs> ah. Tr Traits. Interesting. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. That's so funny. Safe. I'm trying to figure out if there's a level for a Bridge Maker buck, maybe. I bet you woke up from suddenly. You have no recollection of how you got here, nor how long you have been here. However, one thing was certain, as long as you remained in this room, there wasn't much you could do to pass the time. You thought more on how comfortable a bed was, given the situation, it was tempting you, like cheese in a mousetrap. You could indulge, or you could reconsider the possibility of breaking through the chains. They didn't look very strong. Worse comes to worse, you could always say it broke in own. I can have. Me, 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 me. <laughs> you give in, resting your head against the pillow once more. As you close your eyes, your mind swirled in confusion, trying to wrap your head around the situation. Where were you? What will, the, will be your fate in this cell? Would you ride alone here for the rest of your days? You didn't know. You are putting a lot of faith in your captor being merciful, yet your god told you it was the right thing to do. The chain on your neck made it difficult to truly relax, but you managed to fall asleep all the same. A creaking noise filled the room, startling you awake. Hello? It was still dark outside, you perceive it was still very light in the night. Your eyes scanned the room, but you, it didn't take long before you noticed the figure peering in through the open doorway. It's open? She, she stared down at you silently, watching, waiting. You recognize her attire being the same as the woman in the painting. Although she was much more intimidating up close and personal, she took one step forward towards your bedside. Then another, can we just pretend that we are slow sleeping? Her movements were slow and calculating, as if she, was, she were analyzing each one of your shaky breath. It kind of feels like uh, two options, uh, a horror scenario or, you know, how some people try to approach street cats. This is how it feels. Soon she was hovering over you, you notice her hand twitching. It was something that reminded you she was a living creature and not a menacing statue or a figure made up to scare children in the night. Oh, that is that is cool effect. How did she do that in the RPG Maker? I mean, I guess you could, and then put a layer on top of it. The Light Keeper. You are... shaking. Huh? You are twitching. <laughs> the mysterious woman straightened her, straightened her posture, moving her arms behind her back. She was hiding something. She stayed silent for a minute, staring you down with her masked gaze. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. That is all. You start to sit up, however, your movement freeze when you see the tall woman stretch her arms in a commanding way. Stay down. 
She spoke in an authoritative tone, flexing her fingertips with the sharpest nail you've ever seen. It was reminiscent of a predator bearing its claws. You hesitated for a moment before slowly lowering yourself back down on the bed. <laughs> You're smiling, yeah, I can see that. Good girl. She and she Did you just... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Her hands less tense, but an authoritative aura still lingered thick in the air around her. Do as I say, and I will ensure no harm comes to you. Her hand gripped the chain hanging from your neck, pulling your face up closer to hers. Understood. Mm -hmm. You nodded, staring right at, up at her with a nervous expression. Y yes, uh, uh, understood. Very good. Such a sweet, frightened little thing. You've been so compliant so far. Don't worry, nothing will ever so much as harm a hair on that pretty little head of yours. A familiar cold hand gently grab a hold of your face. Ending obedient. Oh. Hmm. Is that why it has like 1 hour 30 minutes, potentially? That is... This is interesting. I, I love it. Okay, on to the next, I guess. Okay, let's break the chain. Actually, I don't want to break the chain. Why am I breaking the chain? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Gah. A sling of... Gah. A sling of chain breaks. You still find the shackle around your neck to be completely unmovable. At the very least, you could now walk around the room you were shut inside of. Or... The minute you woke up from suddenly, you have no recollection- uh-huh. Your question will go- oh, we cannot go back to sleep. Yes, this is the same dialogue. She must have taken me, but why? Dialect that we've known before. A journal of some sort laid on the edge of the window. Looking at it, you notice it had writings about the upkeep of the place you were locked inside of. Why is it here? Sorry. <clears throat> Why is it here? This is. <clears throat> Why is it here? Does this room belong to the Keeper of the Lighthouse? You scan through the notebook for anything that could prove useful to you. Attempt number 13, Magical Security System. Repairs to the old magical generator have proven successful. We managed to power them using crystal cricket from the depths of Lumen's secret mines. My servants had implemented an emergency security override successful last night testing the crystal. I ordered them to hide them for the time being among the lighthouse. You read further, hearing details describing what the security of Red could do. It seemed that you will be able to strengthen security or completely disable it if you collect three of those crystals and hook them up to the generator. Interesting. I suppose my best chance at survival would be to track down this crystal to gain access to the security. But where could they be? O outside? Probably, not in this room. The candlelight flickers being one of the only scents of warm and light filling the room. Seeing as you are powerless, keeping a light source close by you might prove useful. Do you want to take the candle with you? Nah. A bottled plant serves as one of the few decorations in the room. Admittedly, this cell was nicer compared to those found in most dungeons. It was rare to see one held captive in the room with planes painting and a few of the sea. Wait, hold on a moment. Alright, just checking how much ending we have. You could smell the salt water scent of the sea from your bed. That scent only got stronger the second you walked towards the only window in the room. An endless dark sea greets you. Light appears to be circling around the building, parting through the thick fog every moment. Looking down, you realize your prison must be the top of a tall tower. A lighthouse most likely. There are sharp jagged rocks decorating the base of the lighthouse below. 
The arm must look like a natural defensive mechanism to keep anything unwanted out. How did I even get here? Did, did I really stay asleep through a tree by sea? I don't know. Maybe. Outside. You jiggle the handle of the door. Fully expecting it to be locked, you find yourself pleasantly surprised to hear a click. The rest of the door creaked so loudly it made the rest of the room feel definitely silent by comparison. However, after a few moments of the quiet lingering, you feel it's safe to move on past your enclosure. Do you want to leave the room? Hmm. Stop clicking on the bed, goddammit. Okay, let's leave. The silence has replaced the sound of your unsteady steps tapping against the cold ground. Upon walking into the room, you feel a chill run down your spine. Nice collection. A rider crawled on your spine. The tingling sensation felt like something small had gotten into your clothes, exploring your skin in ways most discomforting. The tiny little legs creep their way down your torso and towards your ankles. An unbearable itch spread across your leg as the crawling continued. The longer it went on, the more you felt like there were multiple insects clumping around you rather than just one. What is this arrow and thing? Ignore? You can end walking through the room, slowly kicking your legs with each step in an attempt to shake the feeling off. A cascade of itchiness overcame your ankle once more so much it became impossible to ignore much longer. Against your better judgement, you lifted the hem of your dress slightly to see what was causing your increasing discomfort. Bug bites, nasty one at that, fresh small red dots cut at your lower legs. You can see them begin to swell before your very eyes. Yet there was not a single living bug to be seen. What in the light's name? How did this happen? It looks infected. I've never seen a bug bite spread so fast like this. It's so itchy. Scratch it. Yeah, scratch it. Your nails dig into your legs. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I'm trying to pick the, the worst options available. Really fills your body for a moment, but in the moment quickly ends the second you pull your hands away. You resign yourself to your fate of scratching the oozing wound every few, second, few minutes. As disgusting as it was, you have to move forward. Oh. Who? Looking in the drawers, you found an array of tools that looked like they were made for vivis vivisections, as well as various food meant for insects and other animals. Nothing that seems useful to you yet. A glass casing like the other ones regarding the wall, however, instead of a pin insect resting inside, you found yourself staring at a brilliant crystal. One of the crystal needed for your plan. The glass casing appeared to be stuck, no matter how you try to pry it open, it doesn't budge. It appears I have another choice. I'll have to find something to break it open. Pity, I quite like this glass, glass case cases. What is this? Oh. Floor number. You see an array of pin bugs and display case to guard the walls. You feel pity for the beautiful creatures. At least their beauty would now go to waste even in death. For a moment you ponder how you would feel if your dead body was used as a decoration. H horrified. How? How terrifying. You have yourself tempered with in such a way that you become display piece. These poor creatures. Oh, we have a hood? I feel honored. To be considered beautiful enough, people would want to honor and preserve it. As eerie it, it is, I can say that it is an at least a little flattering. You approach the closet door with caution. There was a small note above it, though it was written in draconic language you weren't well first in. Judging by the way the handwriting was scratched on, your smile said was an important note. A warning. Your hand grips the cold knob, the cold what? The cold knob of the closet door, taking extra care to make minimal noise when turning it. You still weren't sure what could be lurking among the lighthouse of it all. Slowly, 
carefully. Your eyes were overwhelmed with a set of 20 or so different kind of bugs, all of them swarming, crawling and hopping around different parts of the closet. It felt empty, safer than inside a man of webs, nests and hives decorating each corner of the enclosure. Spending something sparkled among the chaos of the closet. The chaos emerald? Underneath the seat of centipedes and ants, a silver key rested on the shelf. You pause, unsure if it will be worth it to fish out away from the sea of insects before you take the key. Taking a deep breath, you maneuvered your hand into the massive closet before you. You had a feeling these bugs weren't inherently, weren't inherently harmless. It will be best to take caution and try to pry the key out without angering them. Pre press the right key before the timer runs out. Okay. After successfully, gra successfully grabbing the key, you tried to get an lingering box of, of it. The server and the key looked rested as if it hadn't been touched in a long, long time. You got a silver key. Why can we... Oh, doors. Because we get a key. Ooh. Negative one? The first thing you notice upon probably entering the room was the cold atmosphere clinging to your skin. The darkness surrounding the room was not intense and terrifying like you feared, but rather relaxing instead. A bright glow illuminated from the tank, a crystal floated in the water, practically beckoning you closer. The crystal felt more alluring than anything else you had seen in the lighthouse so far. How am I supposed to get it out? A uh, hammer? Hammer? Is that a hammer or a... A weapon of great power light before you. Its aura was intense, making you feel the weight of it before you even pick it up. The cold metal stings against your skin, you had a feeling this sort of weapon did take to kindly to strangers. I'm ever so sorry, but I need your help. Forgive me. You got a hammer. Okay. S status? Still full health. Is it to break this? Yep, break the glass. You gla the glass shatter upon impact with countless shard decorating the floor beneath you. With careful hands, you pry the crystal out of the casing. There we go. I'm terribly sorry, but there wasn't any time to find another solution. We got a crystal. Can we de destroy that? You feel not desire to open this closet again, it's better to leave the bugs inside undisturbed. Oh, this must be for the fish in the aquarium down below. What? Oh yeah, food, because there was pet food. I guess I could take this then. Clutching the candle holder tightly, you feel this time a sense of comfort being able to see more of your surroundings. You got a candlesticks. Didn't we already do this? The silence was steady, yeah. Oh. I think this is a bug. Oh, this is this is really unfortunate. Oh no. Yeah, we we have to restart from the beginning. Okay, I guess we are back here at the beginning with Obidin, huh? You're starting now too. Poor thing. You really must be frightened after all. A low chuckle escaped the woman's lips. The connotation rang loud and clear. Fake sympathy, fake pity. You start to sit up, however, your movement freeze when you see the tall woman outstretch her arms. Okay. Stay silent. Feeling her blood from your neck, fair breath of a true dragon, no doubt. 
A shame seat took your own as understandings. Such a sweet, frightened little thing. You've been so compliant so far. Don't worry, nothing will ever so much as harm a hair in that pretty little head of yours. Same obedient ending. I wonder, why have you taken me? My princess. You're Elizabeth Dux. Oh, interesting. The heir to the throne of the kingdom of Limia and the kingdom of Light. And I am the Light Keeper. It only makes sense to take that which is rightfully mine. Okay. Good. That's all. There's not much different here, I guess. Okay, this time, let's try this. Check your leg for bugs. Grabbing the hem of your nightgown, you were expecting to see, see if beady, beady eyes and microscopic limbs decorate your ankles. You anxiously pulled it up to take a look. Nothing. Not a single hand, spider, or centipede. Nothing was present in your legs to give a clue as to what you were feeling moments before. Hmm, interesting. Safe. Okay, wh what if I didn't do that? Oh, one mistake. One seminar crawling on you was enough to make you panic, but the longer you tried to pray the key away from insect, the more cold into your hand turned. The feeling of thousands of tiny legs scrambling into your sleeve and up your arms was revolting. You dropped the key into the floor to start sweating at your arms. Of course, this only caused the insects to panic as well, making them scribble on your body in the most chaotic fashion. A fall others emitted from some of the bugs you squash, a repellent to other bugs perhaps. A warning. However, these bugs didn't work like they did back in Lumion. They were a kindred spirit, a vengeful species. Ooh, a hive mind. The spider especially didn't take the candy to you squashing one of their own. Despite their small size, you saw one of them rapidly curl circles around your hand, encasing it in a sticky, clingy web. Shaking them off, you stumbled backwards, feeling your breath quicken the more bugs tried to climb onto you from the floor below. S stop no! Thousands of bites pierced your skin, you could feel an irritating venom course through your veins. The agitation made you lightheaded, every attempt to get them off, you only made more and more climbing up your, your skin faster. Yeah. Soon your face was completely covered in bugs, you feel a tickle in your ear, disgusting. Tiny claws prodding into your nose and poking into your mouth. Seeing tiny kaleidoscope looking eyes staring back into yours as they made their mark on your eyelashes was enough to cause you to faint. The venomous creature numbed your entire body as your eyes slowly closed for the last time. Baron. I noticed that. The closer you got to the tank, the more massive you realized it truly was, this was merely a window to a much bigger environment. Your goal was inside but out of reach. Mm-hmm. You got a hammer? Can we smash this? For a brief moment, you can apply to the consequences, consequences if you smash the glass with the hammer. No, no, not only will that kill all of the fishes inside, it could cause a catastrophic flood. Not to mention it will definitely be enough chaos to draw suspicion and be found out and locked away immediately. I'm certain of it. You look again towards the glass. Yeah, y y you know. You, you know what to do. Do it. No, I'm not going to do it. You press the drink to shake off this intense urge to break the glass. Do it. You look down the hammer, then back up in the tank. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, the thug wind. The gem glistened in the water, reflecting beautiful light throughout the room. You ponder the consequences once more. Breaking the glass would cause the room to flood, and it would definitely attract attention, but then again that could work in your favor. If you grab the crystal and run run far from this room, you're fairly certain you wouldn't get caught amongst the confusion and panic it would take to mend the catastrophe. The lies of the chaotic creatures, however, with it a bit heavier on your soul, do it. An intense instinct shot through your body like an arrow to the chest. I'm sorry, fishy. What were you doing, you wondered? You realized your life was in the line you felt vindicated. Under the assumption that your life was worth more than a few fish you were going to outlive regardless. You realize there's no guarantee they die if the floor if the room flooded regardless, there will be water on the floor. A loud shatter echoed throughout the room, consequently 
followed by the intense rupture of water flowing out of the tank. I'm not sure you can like escape that. Another crash to the glass. Then another. Water spotted out rapidly, sucking your feet and the hem of your dress. You saw the glimmering light of the crystal fall through the hole in the glass, but you managed to catch it before it collided with the floor. My apologies, I'm afraid there are times required directions. The room served no further, further, further use to you, you turn on your hill and skip the floating room. You got a crystal. You gained the trait misguided? Interesting, can we go down? To your surprise, this door didn't lead into a aquarium anymore. Was this another safety feature of the lighthouse? Regardless, you step through the door and I think you keep moving forward. You attempt to get an idea of your surroundings, but the only thing you could take note of was the floor being made of wood due to the sound of its floorboard with your every step. Creak, creak, creak. You pause for a moment, reaching your hands out to try and feel any furniture that may be around. Creak? The floorboards cried out. The only problem. You didn't make a step to cause the noise this time. You held up the candle, which barely lit the dark room around you. There didn't appear to be much to this room at a first glance. However, upon further inspection, you notice a hatch on the door on the floor. Just what could this lead to? I don't know, but I want to go back a bit for this thing. What if you don't have the candle? To your surprise, the door is now wide open. Huh? It looks like there's another room behind the closet. A hidden room, how curious. Are we not going to that room? Okay then. Instead, you find something most unusual for items in drawers, a variety of old book of varying subjects. The most common theme among them seems to be the importance to other kingdoms. Their importance to other kingdoms. You eventually find one pertaining to the history of religion and folklore among the kingdom of Lumion. You notice a specific page bookmark. Read the page. Chapter X, The Royal Family. The Lux lineage fall from a direct line to the divine, the almighty light which guided us all. It's said that the light blessed the king with their once own power once long ago and that powerful energy has been passed down throughout the generations since then. This blessed individual seemed to rule over all of Lumen with kindness and compassion, being most well renowned for their uncanny healing abilities and other proficiencies in magic. Each ruler has brought a new form of prosperity among the kingdom, and as their family three grows, so will their light surrounding the world. You look through the pages, all which seems to be a description of past rulers with their image next to them. Whoever wrote this book seems to view the family in high regards. The amount of praise was so overwhelming, it felt like you were reading a performance piece from a bar bard rather than a historical record. Any criticism addressed in regard to the royal family were quickly denounced by this author with much vigor. Skimming through the page, you stopped once you spotted something familiar. Yourself. You know this book must have been new, new, based on the first smell of the paper. However, you never expected it to be new enough to include your likeness. Strangely enough, the corner of your page was a dockyard in the book. Perhaps your captor needed official reference of you for your kidnapping. Princess Elizabeth Lott, the merciful mother of light. Princess Elizabeth show kindness to all of the kingdom, rich or poor, young or old. Our princess has sworn to take care of everyone who steps foot into Lumion, no matter the cost. Hello. Uh. Okay, the game first game. Wait, what? 
Sorry, was that a new dialogue? You are scanned back to the books and... Oh, wait. Did I accidentally save? <laughs> After that, that's so funny. You didn't trust that last book report reputableness, but they're gonna some of the authors of these outer history books. You thought they might be ha have more valuable information if your cursed tempted you enough to look. Look at another book? They are expression lead up. One of your favorite books on the divine was in the light skipper possession. Ephemer said comforted you as you opened the book. Wait. This witness, I... This is my handwriting. Did they take a book when they kidnapped me? You skim over the text. The divine has interfered in mortal life only once, blessing the king of all to pass down this blessing throughout of his family tree. The king always referred to this gift as the Enlightenment. Not only has it been recorded that those with the Enlightenment possess double decrypt blending amounts of bright light, but it appears it affects each member of the royal family differently. The text taken from the king on of all states that the light guides our path and make us able to see that which is best for our people. We all have the capacity to see so little without lights, our eyes are not well adjusted to darkness. The Enlightenment provides me and my kin the, the ability to see possibilities which others cannot, guiding them through the familiar and providing safety. This is one of the most famous explanations for the Enlightenment, with many philosophers and scholars have varying interpretations of any and all implications. The most popular theory to add to this statement is that the Enlightenment was a gift from the Divine in order to protect the kingdom of Lumion from the evil darkness of the shadows and other dark folk. Your eyes dart to your handwriting scribbled underneath. Light is nothing without shadow. These two things work together in harmony to create a picture. The absence of one impairs visibility for all. You scythe, closing the book once more. As much as you dare the death disorder put into covering all the bases. You couldn't help but feel frustrated whenever someone used the Enlightenment existence as a proof that those who roam in darkness are evil incarnate. Your whole life has been dedicated to understanding divine and Enlightenment, and you will continue to dedicate yourself until your dying breath. You gain a trait lore keeper. Enemies your frustration, you saw something etched into the back of your book the book you didn't recognize. The number zero three was written in her narrating that looks so different from your very own. For a f moment you took back at a note on the back close up. Could it be w what note? <laughs> what? Uh, okay, we, we're just gonna ignore that note then. Walking in yet another ear room, you couldn't, you couldn't shake the feeling like you were being watched. You cautiously walked forward in the room, looking back and forth for any sign of intelligent life. Nothing. Child of light, you've strayed far from your land. Has the darkness become your salvation? An eerie voice whispered right into your ears as if it were hovering behind you. Startled, you turn around, but we're met with nothing once more. Am I? Am I going mad? I, I must be. No, no, you're perfectly sane, little firefly. You guess hearing the voice now whispering directly into your other ear, unsurprisingly, nothing was to your other side. You look around with a sense of cautious confusion as the voice spoke out to you once more. Pray tell, what happened when an extension of such power as yourself stray far from the source it came from? Why is it yellow? Why is the choice yellow? Are you speaking out the divine? Hop servant, yes indeed I am singing out the divine. I can feel something about you, see something just out of reach in your mind. Come closer, child of light. Is, is there any reason why it's yellow? No, this isn't where the voice is coming from. What if we just leave? We can. You found yourself strangely drawn to the mirror in the middle of the room. Taking a cautious step after another, you heard the familiar whisper once more. Good, now I can see you better. The voice rang in your ears, but you were now able to identify the source. The mirror was speaking to you. It must be en enchanted somehow. More important, however, you notice it contained one of the very same crystal you needed for the security systems. One face can tell many tales, little firefly. Okay, time to break you. You're interested in my protective crystal, are you not? Er, uh, yes, admittedly. 
A, re a reflection tells a story of her past, present, and undecided future. You are low, almost eerie chuckle, escaping the enchanted object. Tell you what, indulge me. Let me see your story, let me peer into your very soul, and perhaps I'll give you my soul in return. Peer into my soul? Why is it yellow? I'll just be looking at your very, very closely. This complaint, the crystal will be yours. What do you say? I need to think about it. Sit yourself. I'll be here when you change your mind. What? Oh, this is disgusting. Why did, Why did uh, it automatically save there? Alright. Wonderful. Now where to begin? The mirror task can tell it to itself, leaving it to stand there awkwardly in front of it while it talked to itself on what information it wanted to know. You actually managed to get better look at your reflection here. Your night god had certainly seen better days after everything you had been through. Your eyes trail upwards, looking at your face, and then... Huh? You made a confused nose noise, getting closer to the mirror to look, take a look at yourself. Is something the matter, princess? Your hand gently traced the bows in your hair, fixing them up ever so slightly to lay better on your hand. Oh. I don't remember putting these bows in my hair before bed. I haven't worn anything like this in a long, long time. I'm not even sure if these bows are mine. Where did they come from? Oh. Interesting. Ah, I said so. If you like, Princess, I could search your memories for an answer. Perhaps the information you seek is out of reach of your mind in your weakened condition. In fact, this might be the perfect place to start to understand your story better. Yes, yes, the bows are a good place to start. The mirror spoke, not bothering to wait for your consensus to search your mind. The crystal above it glowed and made a low hum as you saw the contents of the mirror change in the store. Your mind felt numb as the hum got louder and louder, you became full. Lightheaded and slight days, but you managed to keep a steady footing on the ground beneath you. You f show flashes of your time the lighthouse appear before you bit by bit, like watching your life rewind at rapid speed. The only difference is it appeared to not be from your perspective. What a strange thing to look at yourself from a few points outside of your eyes. How many endings are there again? Okay. You start yourself waking up, the bows in the tight needle in your hair. Just a little further back and. Wait, I... You start to protest and the wave of dizziness of reclaim you once more. It will be wise not to interrupt me while this is happening, princess. While I'm connected to you, your reflection is connected to me. Disrupting my process will be rather unpleasant. The mirror was digging up memories of your life prior to the lighthouse. The further back it went, the more easy you felt. Stop it. You fought against the mirror influence, you didn't trust any of this, not one bit, and your survival and singing were taking over. You clutch your mind during the worst headache you ever experienced the humming noise reverberated inside your brain. Oh, well, okay. Ah, uh, you took one step back. Then another. What are you doing? You, you fool. If you continue that, you continue that. You'll... The voice spoke with such regard it didn't only cause you to panic more. Whatever this thing was doing to you, it felt like you were doing, being torn apart both in mind and body. You cried out, feeling a burning sting all along your face, painfully numbing your neck and ears. You couldn't hear anything for a moment, your vision was foggy. The only thing you knew was that something was painfully wrong. Once your vision cleared, you looked back into the mirror to find out what the source of this excruciating feeling was. Oh! <laughs> the sight before you cast an overwhelming nose yet to form in your gut. Your ears were ringing, you could only faintly make out the sound of the mirror mentioning your reflection. Something about getting caught between something. The burning wet feeling of your blood trickling down your own face was the only thing your mind could properly focus on. Killing over, you felt your vision fade in and out. In and out, in and out, until there was nothing left. Baden. That's the second Baden. So we get two Baden, one trade ending. There is still... Let's see, one more Baden and four more trade ending and one trade ending. Whew, that's a lot. Let's do this. There's a lot. How do I... 
that's a lot. Well, okay. Maybe I can, but like, my wrist is just not in a good position. My, the table sucks, that's all I could say. I don't think I can do this. God damn, ugh. Yeah, I don't think I can do it, because it's, it's just impossible for me with my wrist. Okay, now let's try to call Marcel. You focus your energy into maintaining your composure, looking over the mirror frame, you watch time move backwards silently. Those bows don't appear to be anywhere here. The mirror said, also to you it felt obvious the mirror had different goal in mind than finding your bows. Suddenly the rapid movements of your past came to halt, the mirror was replaying your memories to you. It connected to your mind and made you relive the moments, experience the same feelings, smell the smells and feel the world around you that you were once so familiar with. You felt the scorching suns against your face, it was hotter than hell on that fateful day. The crackling sound of fire around you as you were led to the ritual ground only made your feelings of unease worse. Okay, maybe to be, fa to be fair, we might be able to do the thing before, because I think it's the same key every time. The only thing you could rely on this moment were your sense other than scythe, the blindfold and restraints made it hard to do much else. You heard cheering from a crowd. Are you being burned? Praise to you praise to your god from your royal advisor. He loudly rambled to the audience of what could you only assume was your entire kingdom. He had long since given up any hope, and your advisor could tell from the way he spoke. He told of you as if you were a savior who would be one with the divine in mere moments, consumed by the light of fire getting closer and closer to your scheme. More religious leader from your kingdom chanted a language you spend your life dedicated to learning, spotting holy words that would end in your demise. They said your sacrifice would save, the save them all. You heard a scream, at first you said assume it was the cheering of the crowd getting more intense, but then it was followed by another. Another. A cry from your advisor to stop the ritual was heard as the floor beneath you shook and trembled. Shook and trembled. You felt someone grab you rather forcefully, dragging you off the platform you were propped on top of and ripping off your blindfold. An invasion of dark figures from the neighboring kingdom were interrupting the ritual, killing off every guard inside. Oof. You were ushered off to a falsified sense of safety. Internally, you were grateful for the ambush, even if it would only prolong your life temporarily. But you could never forget the unease you felt when you saw how many people were out in the crowd, all staring right at you with mixtures of unpleasant expressions. You stumbled backward as you felt the grip on your mind cease, the feeling of judgment still lingered. Like their eyes were still piercing your soul. Oh, there's multiple eyes, I just realized. <laughs> ah, my apologies, I'll let my curiosity get the better of me. This was merely yesterday, to be sacrificed to God with the sun directly over you, people cheering for your demise. How tragic. You had pain expression on your face, unable to tell if the mere sympathetic tone was to mock you or not. Also, I must lock away safe inside of her dead. The invasion lasted longer than any I'd ever heard of. I could hear the combat from inside the castle walls. It was because of the invasion I'm still here today, strangely enough. The Lightkeeper had a plan in mind for you and your kingdom, one that a ritual to sacrifice you would have ruined. I suppose, when you say it that way, I shall be grateful to her. But what exactly does she have planned for me? What is to be my fate? The Lightkeeper desire many things. Taking your kingdom for her own is on top of that list of desires. I cannot say more than that, I'm afraid. I see. You know, you seem oddly calm for someone in your situation. Why is that? I have no choice. There's no time to rest or grieve, no time for betrayal or hope. If I stop for even a moment, something horrible could happen. I need to focus on the task at hand. Something horrible could happen that is far out of your control. As it has, and as it will again. Don't you go philosophical at me. Oh, why is it yellow? I have no use for you. you You've tried my patience. You spoke out, grabbing the hammer you had used to break the glass of the aquarium. Without further hesitation, you swung the weapon toward the mirror, casting it to shatter with a brilliant, loud, cursing sound. 
The power from inside the shed of the shattered mirror combusted into a ring of smoke that filled up the entire room in a dense fog. A familiar feeling flooded your mind like a wave came crashing down on you, encapsulating your entire being. You felt all your feelings that you have been pushed down inside your surface, each painful memory replayed in your mind bit by bit. Is this the only way I can truly protect myself? After dedicating my life to my home, my home, my kingdom, they will throw me away without a second thought. Why is that? Was it for power? Control? Or just out of plain stupidity? I've had enough. I can see her here and let this happen again. They want to be protected, protected and make sense. They want a false salvation. They want to use me to their heart desire. Well, they can find someone else. I'll never let that happen again, not from them, not from everyone. It doesn't matter who gets hurt in the process, never once did. Did it. I'll make them sorry. Ending misguided soul. So that's... Wait, is yellow ending actually? I'm curious, wait, wait, let me check. Oh, yes, yellow apparently is an important plot point or something. Hmm, noted. Okay, ask for the crystal again. Well, I simply need to take things one step at a time, ensuring my safety should be prior to as of now. Would she be so kind as to let me use the crystal now? You reach your hand up near the top of the mirror, waiting for a response. Hmm. Yes, I suppose you have proven yourself worthy. Very well, you may take it. You smile, gently praying the beautiful gem from the frame of the mirror. You got a crystal. Okay. Safe. Nothing, that giant thing is nothing, okay then. Before you stands a stone tablet with three notches. Do you want to put all magic crystals in here? Yes. The crystal glow reflecting in an wait there's an option to say no. An arrow the sunlight all through the dimly lit room. You watch in our spark a spark of magical energy came out of the crystal connecting to each other through beams of light. You noticed it was making a fine faint wearing sound that progressively got more powerful. You felt calm. Serene until you felt something grab into your wrist. You stared up at the towering dragon clutching tightly onto you as the wearing of the crystal grew louder and louder. You you fool! What do you think you're doing? She yelled over the sounds of a crystal, yanking your arm to pull you backward away from the mechanism. You stumbled onto the ground. You're trying to go back? Do you have a death wish? Fine, if you want to stay here then. I'll just have to make you stay. But wait! You crashed to the floor with that, the light caper grabs under your arm only got tighter each passing moment. You snatched a cold mask from the light caper face, the orienting her enough to weave your way out from underneath her. She looked completely bewildered, a tad flustered, nothing like the fearsome woman you had seen minutes prior. You know the name? Uh, Darcy, listen to me. Oh. You. You remember me? Darcy called over to the sound of the magical mechan- Called over the sound of the magical mechanism getting louder and louder. He turned around frankly, pushing the crystal down into sockets with more force. All around you, green beams of light twisted and contorted, forming geometric patterns that shielded the surrounding lighthouse. Once the shield went up, the wearing calmed down and everything came to of a standstill. You relaxed with a deep breath escaping your lips. You turn the security on? I thought surely you were trying to escape, weren't you? She took a few steps closer to you, speaking in a noticeably softer voice. Why in the divine's name would I do that? <laughs> well, I did get up you. I certainly didn't expect you to remember me either. Oh, Darcy. How could I ever forget a dragon who made my youth less lonely? You let out a light-hearted laugh. Truth be told, you felt like you were able to properly breathe for the first time since being captured here. There had always been tales of Dragonfolk and princesses being at odds with each other. But for Darcy and herself, all of us it was true. All the days thinking I to meet you, I could never forget it, not in a million years. After you left, I never thought I'd see you properly again, especially with our divulging reputations. 
How could I just leave it there? After hearing what those despicable people plan to do to you. Ugh, just thinking about it make my, makes my blood boil. Well, thankfully the magic here shall protect us from outsider for the time being. I'm sorry for chaining you up, Ellie. This lighthouse isn't exactly the safest place to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I noticed that. I promise, my princess. I'll make it up to you. Nothing will ever hurt you again. You felt a familiar cold hand caress your cheek gently, and some, and some months of anger, anger, anger in Darcy was replaced by something much softer. Something much more loving. You had been with Darcy for a couple of months now. The lighthouse was keeping you both in, safe inside, although you had been making plans to attempt to go further out past the sea. Are you arm, almost ready, my princess? There, Darcy called out to you, sending off to the side a bit awkwardly with her wings covered her, covering her face. You finished putting on your dress, adjusting your hair accessories ever so slightly. I think so, just one more thing and... Okay, you can look now. The dragon turned around, her wings falling back behind her as she smiled at you. Oh, I, I fucking knew it. My darling, you, you look just as beautiful as I had always remembered you. Can I can I hit the dialogue box now? I'm glad we were able to steal that dress back for you, you steal it. You felt Darcy gently pull your face closer to hers, pressing her lips against yours. The feeling always gave you a spark, like an electric current shock your entire body is second your lips connected. Only to melt away into the habits of feelings imaginable. You smiled as you pulled away from Darcy. Truthfully, you aren't too much- oh, wait, this is Elizabeth. Truthfully, you are much too kind. I give you my thanks for retrieving so many of my things. You looked down with, with a sadder smile, thinking back on everything you had to leave behind at home. All the people you love. Are you sure? All the positions you cherish. It is really no problem, I assure you. One day I'll take Lumion back from its hard rulers and we will become the new ones in their stead. No more terrifying lighthouse, no more darkness, no more pain or suffering for you or for anyone under serving. Anything and everything you call everyone will be at your fingertips. You look back at the light keeper who was holding you as if you were the most precious thing in this world. Because you are. For them. I think I already have everything I could ever hear. Everyone here with you. True end. Interesting. Lightkeeper, an RPG maker, point and click game made by Smart Storm Bunny, Kathika PNG, and Reine Era. Oh, three people. A small box set on the shelf. You recognize the lock and it, it's a numbered lock? Ah, back in Lumin, most people use boxes like this to keep important keep safe safe. Just what could be so important to the lightkeeper that she put in a box like this? You put, you felt your curiosity grow, put in a number. Okay. That was the right combination, the box didn't open. Oh, okay, this is you. I be the most rare collector items, that's for certain. The preserved carbs of a princess. Yes, there will probably be pe people making millions of dollars for such a thing. Not people indeed, but at least that means I have value, I suppose. Okay, this time let's start to swat out our legs. With the hesitation, you bring your hands down to fabric of grass and smack down on your legs. You hear an unsettling crunch that nearly resembles the sound of knuckles cracking. Pulling up your dress, you expect to see some sort of bug carcass fall to the floor. But there was nothing found except for an unsettling green slime trickling down your ankle. Ew. It emitted an odor most unpleasant, a must sense that felt like acid to your nostrils. You attempted to wipe off the slime with your hands, but only coated them in this sticky, slime-like substance. It smells. It's absolutely vile. Oh dear, I better not linger in this room. It's making my party much worse than it was before. Interesting. Oh, you notice a crack in the wall starting from the floor and climbing it its way up to the wall. Upon closer inspection, you notice a few insects runs to hide inside of a crack. 
Mm, okay, there's nothing there. Okay, what if we go down? You are trying to get an idea of your surroundings, yes, floorboard, creak, creak, creak. You pause a moment, reaching your hands out to try and, and feel any furniture that may be around. Creak? The floorboards cried out. The only problem? You didn't make a step to cause the, no the noise this time. It's fair to ask you to go for the darkness like this, so she'll find a source of light before proceeding. I mean, sure, quite cool. Because this just soft locked me. Yep, it just soft locked me. You try juggling the handle of the closet, but it doesn't budge. Must be stuck. Listening closely, you, can f you feel like you can hear laughter from the other side. Books, yes. Oh, what? Jump, jump in. You were hesitant at first, but you saw the light of crystal floating down within the depths of Tang. You had no choice. Getting your courage, you plunged into freezing water. Your body shriveled up on instinct to colliding with the bitterly cold water, but you tried to cup your mouth close despite wanting to gasp on impulse. Your eyes adjusted to darkness as you looked below you for the light of a crystal. There it is. Huh? Why does it feel like it's getting lighter down here? Oh. Uh, hello. Looking up, you saw the source of a light you felt grow by the minute. A large beast swam before you, burying its teeth and slowly inching closer and closer. You cursed your decision making internally, your survival instinct kicking in as you swam down underneath the fish in an attempt to disorient it. Press the right key before time runs out. Ah. Uh, oops. A sharp tooth pierced through your torso, go going through your heart as well as multiple bones. The pain was excruciating. The pain was short. Another crunch through your diaphragm and everything ended just like that. Bad end. So that's the third bad end. Interesting. Wait, what? 24? Twenty four zero three. What? This is so confusing. Okay, yeah, I can't. I cannot interact with even the thing. Twenty four zero three. Yeah, okay, this is must be where I get a code, but since it was bugged, I get teleported out and didn't see the code. Interesting. Reach your hand in. The water is cold. Freezing cold takes the depths of the ocean. Your hand flinches and retracts the moment it makes contact with the water. Jump in, I guess. Your swift movements were enough to temporarily confuse the gigantic creature, enabling you to grab a hold of the magic crystal. You kick and push through the water faster than you ever had before in order to make the clean skate back up towards the hatch. Emerging to the surface, you panically pulled yourself up out of the hatch and onto the wooden floor. Half heck! You killed over, emptying the water in your throat and lungs under the hardwood floor. The shift in temperature between the freezing cold water and the lighthouse was enough to cause immense discomfort to your entire body. Still looking at the gems in your hand, you felt a wave of relief wash over you. You got a crystal. Okay. Oh, wait, I can see the angular fish thing there. Well, interesting. Moving onwards to the next room, you pause in your tracks. 
Two voices could be heard nearby arguing. You pass your steps, hiding behind the door that was slightly creak open to observe his situation. What do you mean she's missing? You heard an imposing voice amid the room, speaking to a dark folk creature who looked as if he wanted to be anywhere but here. The chain has been severed, my lady. The door was unlocked. The princess is missing. He peered into the doorway, seeing a seven foot tall dragon like creature hover over a small shadow of being. Seven feet tall? Her scar swirled with an uncanny power, the sight alone caused your breath to hitch. She tusked, looking down at the servant with a disapproving expression. You meant to tell me that you neglected my orders to ensure the prison was of quality. The light keeper, keeper swiftly grabbed a hold of the dark fortune, forcing their gaze up to her. Please forgive me, almighty light keeper, I swear I will correct my error, please. You fool. You saw the servant core in her grasp. This plan will only work if she's alive, so you better find her fast. This is your last chance of redemption if you continue to be so utterly incompetent. The dragon crushed down slowly, taking her time as she partially let go of the servant's face in a way that pushed them backwards. Your eyes widened as you saw that this being's face contorted and more. Her skin is near her mouth widened and her skin near her mouth widened and pulled apart as if it were a sort of slime or putty. Her hand flexed, bearing claws like nails that you could have sworn were in their, mo their moments before. Scale grew and covered her body as if it were nothing. The snapping sound of her bones rearranged, rearranging to fill up the larger space seen shivered down your spine. I'll find her myself and make an example out of your pathetic excuse for servitude. Your gaze shifted to the poor servant nodding frantically. Attention to Gaia grew thick as the light gave her form slowly turned back to what it was moment before. She tusked, looking away from the pathetic thing in front of her. Get out of my sight, I have no time for this. She said authoritatively, and just like that, you saw the servant dart out of the room. Wait, one true ending, three bad ending, two trade ending, so there's three trades ending left. The lightkeeper lingered for a few moments, staring into the large thing that took up the majority of the room, filled up the deferred up with water. Different types of aquatic plants got to the floor in the underwater tank, gently flowing in motion with the calm water. She couldn't have gotten far, not while her magic is still blocked. She let out a discontented no noise before stomping out of the room. You entered yourself after a few moments of silence. Hmm, okay. Wait. Oh dear, there's broken glass everywhere. Someone could get terribly hurt if they step on a glass shard, perhaps I should clean this mess? Yeah. Worry filled your eyes as you get to work. You used the ends of your nightgown to carefully pick up the broken shards of glass, collecting them bit by bit until no mess was left. Your eyes scanned the room for somewhere to dispose of them, eventually spotting a wisp basket of swords. It was empty. Empty as the soul of a hero. Did you, do you need to mention it? Cautiously, you the glass shard into the container living room as clean as you should, despite the circumstances. Letting out a sight of relief, you look on proud lady your work. No one now it will get her at least. You gain the treat kind hearted. Interesting. This is yellow. I'm sorry to intrude. Oh chuckle rang in your ear. Well, Firefly, you're far from duty. You can rest here for as long as you like. I I can? You look around with puzzled expression, still trying to find the source of the whispering voice. Certainly. Come into the light, let me see you up close. Okay. Huh? What's those thing before? There before? Hmm. The combination seems to be correct. The box opened. Inside was a small hand mirror that you instantly took out. There was clearly something magical about it, but you weren't well first enough in this type of enhancement to tell what it was. Excuse me. May I ask you about something I found? I'm at your disposal, little firefly. What is on your mind? You held out a small object for the mirror to observe. This mirror, I can tell it has some sort of infused magic inside of it, but I can decipher what exactly that magic is. Both mirrors start to glow, sub glow subtly in a pulsing motion as the hand mirror lifted it out of your hand and floated in front of her face. Ah yes, this mirror, I'm aware of it, this is a memory mirror just like myself. However, this one was only made to store one memory in particular. Huh? One memory stored in that? Whose memory is it? 
Will she serve me, please? A few moments of silence fall across the room. You heard that oath of a mischievous chuckle right in your ear once more. As you wish, your highness. A familiar feeling float, feeling flowed to your mind like a wave came crashing down on you and encapsulating your entire being. The mirror showed you a scene. You saw a castle shrouded in light, elegant decor, and a draconic child being held within the depth, the depths of it below. A smaller voice rang in your ears. Your thoughts became clouded and drowned now. This must be thoughts of a present memory. Young Darcy. These stupid chains! Gah! I wish I could burn this place to the ground. You heard the sounds of metal clanging together. The young one appeared to be gnawing away at her restraints and first attempted them to break free. After proving unsuccessful, she slumped down on the floor with a loud groan. Let me out of here! The tiny dragon banged on the side of the wall with her fist, immediately recalling and shouting with pain. Ow! Grr! Stupid wall, stupid castle, stupid kingdom. I hate it here. I want to go back to my cave. It was nice and dark there, surrounded by my treasure. Wait. The dragon shot wing flare up, flapping in a panic and or agitated manner. My treasure? Dang it, they confiscated it all when they took me, those bastards. A familiar voice interrupted her thoughts. Your treasure? I saw her rapidly turn her head to glare in the direction of a new voice, flapping her wings in an intimidating way. Or, well, as intimidating as someone of her size could be. What do you want? Leave me alone. You already took everything from me. Looking over who she was talking to, you saw... Yourself. Already you from a long, long time ago, you were clutching a gold ring in your hand, embellished with a green jewel of swords. You watched your younger self walk over the prisoner, shutting the door behind you with a click. Is this part of your treasure? My ring? What is she... Why does she have my ring? Because you get looted? That's mine. Give that back, you little vermin. The small dragon lunged to grab the ring from her princess hand, but changed to her from doing so. Your younger self nervous to look up at her, placing the ring down on the floor and sliding it over to her. Huh. She's giving it back to me. She cautiously reached out, grabbing the ring and holding it close to her chest protectively. Why are you helping me? The guard said you stole this. But I don't believe them, you look no older than I am. My name is Elizabeth, I'm not really supposed to be here, but it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Darcy. A smile form on your past self sleeps. Darcy, that's a lovely name. Eh, thanks. She is actually rather nice. So, uh, can you get me out of here? I'm afraid I cannot. These chains are infused with my father's magic. It will take a skilled magic user to undo such a thing. Darcy groaned again. I'm gonna die alone down here. Eh? Don't say that. You didn't do anything to deserve to being put down here. I swear I'll try to convince my father to let you go. You sat down in front of the mirror displaying the scene before you. You thought it would have ended at the one memory, but you were surprised to see more and more playing one after another. You smiled fondly, remembering your old friend. Every now and then, her internal thoughts would surround your mind, making you chuckle. You remembered Darcy. How could you ever forget her? Your father had ordered for her capture after finding her alone in the cave. Something about that never said right to you. In Lumia, dragon folk are often regarded as chaotic, dangerous beings. It wasn't out of the ordinary for the soldier to capture one on sight. However, even as a child, you didn't believe that to be true, not one bit. You never had much company around your age when you heard of the dragon guard that captured Part of you didn't even care if she was guilty of crime or not. You just wanted to meet her. You lost track of time as you recounted your past with Darcy. Hey, Ellie, what are you doing? Cut it out, damn it! You're going to get in trouble. You observe your, your younger self holding a book of spell taken directly from the King of Lemien. Okay, so your family doesn't want to free Darcy. Chanting the word finally, you didn't stop for anything, even with Darcy protesting. The chains holding your friend is solved into specks and sparkle bright light, and all the chains become no more. She looked in where her restraint seems to be with a baffled expression. You, you really did it. She saved me. But she stole from her father to do so. Who knows what he'll do? Hurry, you have to go, get out of here before they find you. Wait. Come with me, I can protect you, I swear it. I can, I have people here who rely on me. I sincerely doubt that. One day I'll rule over Lumion myself. And I'll make it a safe place for you and your people that I promised to you. Ellie, no. Your younger self held something in her hands, placing it into Darcy's with care. You recognize the small bows. Oh. 
They were the same ones you were currently wearing in your hair. Please, Jess. Don't forget me. You frown once you heard a familiar noise, your father calling out your name from the floor above. You must go, quickly. I'll come back for you. I promise Ellie I won't stop until I become powerful enough to find you again. <sighs> so much running. You can fly, right? Ellie, your smile is bright enough to fill the darkest corners of the world with sunlight. You are my salvation in that prison. When I look into your eyes, I don't feel like the scared child I was, but the woman I must become to keep you by my side. I want to let these selfish desires overtake both of our spirit. I'll light the world to fire and ash just to keep you smiling. I promise I'll come back for you. You stood up from your spot washing on the floor, gently stroking the image of Darcy in the mirror before it faded away, completely leaving you alone to look at your reflection. Oh, uh, what? Hello? E Ellie? Turning on your recognize your friend only older and more powerful. Lightkeeper, you had your suspicion it could be Darcy before, now you were more certain than anything. You weren't sure how long she had been sitting there watching you, but judging by her expression, she appeared like she had been wanting to say something for a long time. He smiled. You came back for me. I promise I will. Ending Lore Keeper. Okay, wait, wait, so that's a clue. Obedient stays in one place. Lore Keeper has give us the clue about the thing. Mischief is that kindness... How do we do kindness then? Oh wait, now we can take the fish food. I quite like feeding fish, the way they seem to surface for food is so cute. I know she but I'm sure giving them a little extra food wouldn't cause lasting harm, right? You grab a hold of the rather large bag. If in your weekend state, you feel surprised you were able to carry such a thing. What? Interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Intervene to save the servant. What? Wait, stop! They called out on pure impulse, immediately running and getting in between the poor Darfall being the lightkeeper. The latter of the two looked taken aback, despite not seeing her eyes, you could tell by the way her jaw dropped subtly that she was shocked from this development. I'm the one you want, right? Please don't hurt anyone. You pleaded, looking up at the towering woman before you. Plead, pleading eyes. You relax over so slightly as the lightkeeper form slowly turned back to what it was a moment before. Even if the sound of her cracking bone was still rather unpleasant. She suddenly stood over you, her expression unchanged, the tension in the air was deadly thick. You go. She commanded, commanded looking at over at the servant you had just saved. Dark fork looked over at you, then like you were before scurrying out of the room. You look up at her, kept her with a nervous expression, wondering what she was plotting next. She looked down at you and turned, leaning forward in order to meet your gaze in a more leveled manner. How did she escape? The chains were worn. I noticed one of them looked frail and work away at it and only broke. My sincere apologies. Oh, the sounds fell between the two of you. You turn yourself in. Why? You are going to hurt him. You throw away your freedom for the sake of a creature you know nothing of. I, I hate to be the reason behind unnecessary violence. I had my fair share of that already. Oh, are you getting reminded of that... Pass, Darcy. You wanted to back up, but a taller woman only pulled your chain closer to herself. She stared into your eyes for what felt like an eternity before slowly letting go, standing upright. Her hands outstretched itself to you, making a gesture like she wanted you to put your yours on top of it. You complied, hesitating ever so slightly. Well, if you comply with my wishes, then I'll do my best to comply with yours as well. She sandwiched your hand in between hers. You couldn't help but notice her wings stretching themselves around you in almost an unprotective fashion. For a second, you wondered if somehow your act of kindness had charmed your captor. She was a menacing moment before, but this wasn't anything like you had expected. You have been, she has been charmed for a long time ago. Come now, I wouldn't be letting you out of my sight. Not after that stunning pull. She got you out of the room, your hand in hers and her wing gently pushing you forward. You were utterly confused. Yet you went along with it. If being kind made the lightkeeper kind to you in turn then, what harm could come from that? True. Ending. Kill them with kindness. <laughs> okay. Oh. Alright, so... One more trade ending. Where? 
Okay, we can sc sprinkle fish food into water now. You smile softly as you set a bag of fish food down on the floor next to you. Looking down into the depths of the water, you couldn't see many fish yet your cursing now no bounds. One picture at a time, you float at the top of the water with food. That's so funny. Just imagine like, she's just like peering through the hatch and like, here, fishy fishy, and sprinkle some food. Bit by bit, fish start swimming to the surface and begin to pack away the food. There are more than you thought there will be. Admittedly, you made sure each small fish you saw get a fair sh share of food as well. In the corner of your eye, you saw some of the fish scurry away while others were still focused on the food at the top. That's odd. Are the fish frightened of me? No. You back up slightly, simply observing the small creatures below. The water, water appeared to be less calm than it was before. Swaying more and more with each fish focused on getting glass piece of food falling into the water. You notice how it looked to be getting brighter inside of tank, only causing more confusion. Suddenly, a big splash of water caused you to jump back. The brief sight of teeth as gigantic as, gigantic as you for very form felt your vision. As fast as it happened, it ended. The fish you, you are feeding had become food themselves to a much bigger, much deadlier creature. Oh, oh my. Your heart ached for the poor little fish, no fishy. However, you quickly snap out of your flex when you saw something rise to the surface of the water. Resting on top of a wet, slimy organic surface was a crystal glistening in the darkness. You shakily reach out for it, taking it in your grasp. Th thank you. You whispered as the gigantic slimy creature went back into the depths of the water. You got a crystal. That doesn't get me the ending? The trade ending? Interesting. Or, or any trait at all. However, you have no idea what the law combination might be, so you decide to leave it be. That's new. There's one more trait ending. Now I'm better than this, I'm a lady. It'll only bother me more if I indulge, you just have to press onwards. There are more important things that need to be dealt with first, and I'll take care of those course inflections. As disgusting as it was, you have to move forward. You get a. That's how? You can try it strong will. Okay. I'm so baffled. Okay, then how? How do we get the strong will ending? Oh, that's new. Please don't speak in riddles. It's awfully rude to scare a lady like that. Show yourself. I'm in sincere apologies, Your Highness. All idea of a caliber deserve more respect than I have given, and for that I beg for your forgiveness. The voice continued whispering, although it had an insincere tone. <laughs> you put it with a discontent expression plastered on your face. Okay then. Oh, okay. Express your discomfort in the situation. So what do you purpose I do? Let myself be tossed in between life and death scenarios against my will? I'm afraid I have not it not in me to endure such a mess any longer. Foo foo foo, then what will you do, my leech? It's not like you have much of a choice in the matter. You wore a displeased expression, walking closer up to the mirror with one fell swoop you gripped the crystal at the top of the frame and pried it out. Wait, what are you? You got a crystal. I tried remaining polite, but simply I have no time for this. You have beginning to walk away from the mirror, however it seems the mirror had other plans. A loud echoing scream made it from the reflective object piercing your ears. You quickly covered your ears, turning backwards to see the mirror proceeding with a glowing and gentle light. This looked familiar, I recognized that it was acting as an alarm. Oh, that's the sound from the game, alright then. Once recognized, click, click you waste no time darting towards the nearest door. Your legs still itch from the back bites, your feet were tired, you were unbearably cold, and you had never felt so close to death as you have been within the last 24 hours. Yet you kept running, you ran as fast as you could. You could hear her footsteps trembling on the floor above, the distinct sound of yelling and someone barking on her swelled in the lighthouse. It wasn't long before you had crashed into shadowly folks. You recognized them as dark folk, and they recognized you as their target. They launched at you with a sharp spear, only barely missing your hair by an inch. You saw the spear they used to get stuck in the cracks of of the wall beside you. Oh, that cracked back then. With one hurried motion, you levered the spear out of the wall and held it up to your throat. Stop! Wait, where? Trying to stab me? Didn't you? Okay. 
there, there must be a uh, confusion command. A voice command through the room because they're trying to save us, right? Causing their person to freeze in their tracks. Then move a step closer. I'm resigned of my fate. I'd rather die by my own hands. I'll do it, I swear. He called out, having an absolute intention of ending your own life here. Truthfully, that's the last thing you would want to do in this moment, but it was the first thing your mind came up with to avoid being apprehended. The source of the cunning voice showed herself to you, her expression hidden behind a vigilant mask. Still, you didn't break eye contact, choosing to stare right as her as you held the weapon to your neck. Princess, put a spear down. She spoke with a sense of authority that almost shook yourself, but it wasn't enough. You need my life, do you not? If you didn't, you wouldn't have gone through all the, of this trouble. The missing figure took a step backwards. She looked at you with an air of uncertainty like no one had ever said such things to her. Silence. A sudden realization th ran through your mind. You were in control. You could make any demand and they would have to hear you out. Now that you know they needed your life, you just had to make sure they believe you would be willing, be willing to throw your life away should they try to force you into something unpleasant. Of course, this plan wasn't foolproof. No plan is. However, once you had managed to convince them to remove the chains around your neck, you felt better at your chance of survival. chances of survival. One request after another and it became apparent that they would do anything to PC you. You had a chance, a chance to take your life back into your own hands. Your decision changed your actions thanks to your strength. You could finally rec reclaim it all for yourself. Ending strength of will. Finally, oh my god, I was so... I was so certain that either the box or the mirror could do it, but every time I do the box, like, there's nothing there. But turns out there is. God fucking damn it, we just need to pick the other options. Okay, so I guess that's all for Lightkeeper. It's conceptually interesting. Uh, I think this will work much better if it's a Ranpy, because I'm pretty sure Ranpy has the options to make a point and click game. Yeah, I feel like there's the implementation of Urgy Maker here kind of makes it janky because sometimes I uh, click stuff that I don't want to click and so it triggers dialogues and stuff like that. But wait, no, no, wait, I'm thinking if RNP also has the options to, I'm, I'm speaking about the game engine, to do one of those quick time event thing, but probably they have, I think, I don't, I don't really remember. Also, okay, let's review the game. Okay, critically, shall we? Art-wise, good. Story-wise, interesting. Music, lovely. I, I I truly enjoy playing the game. Uh, it's just a neat story, you know, of like the princess and dragon. A uh, twist, not a, not a twist. Uh, something interesting, you could say. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not really good at doing this. I'm trying to do this so I can improve myself, obviously, and uh, what else? Honestly, the only criticism I could give is that, and I, f I feel like there's something else. Okay, yeah, the fact that sometimes there's bugs that makes me lock, say, self lock somewhere twice, that painting bug, I don't know how that happens, and the uh, room bug. And also, it's kind of confusing sometimes because, like, there's yellow text, and I just realize, oh, that means the yellow text is an important option. It's not very obvious to me. And there is also other things like, uh, story-wise, kind of jump around because you can do stuff that you weren't meant to do, like for example, the fish thing and stuff like that. But Otherwise, yeah, that's all for Lightkeeper. I truly enjoy the two characters, Elizabeth and Darcy. Yeah, is it, is it Darcy? I forgot. The Lightkeeper. Anyway, yes, I hope you enjoyed it as well. See you later then in my next video. Bye bye.